Did you know that the toughest tough fan, which isn't tough to install but tough to beat, also exists in an even tougher version? These are the Thermaltake Tough Fan 14 Pros, and I was pretty excited when I started benchmarking those. Not necessarily because they are extraordinarily beautiful, uh, though they are kind of mesmerizing to watch with that liquid crystal polymer impeller. No, actually, because we have already had the Tough Fan 12 Pros on the channel, and they were just amazing. So let's hope that the 140mm edition of these fans is just as amazing but in big. These exist in a dual or a single pack, and not to be mistaken for any other Tough Series fan, cause you have a whole bunch of them and they are all very very different, this is only about the pros. And with each of them you will get a bag of mounting screws for both radiators and cases, as well as a RPM limiter. And at this point, kudos to Thermaltake for not jumping on the obvious opportunity to give this RPM limiter some made up bullshit name like Silent Adapter, it, it, it's a resistor. And for once somebody was so goddamn honest and they have just written the resistance right on it. Thank you for that. Anyway, from its look, it has to be one of the few instances where a 140mm edition looks identical to the 121. Just bigger. We still got the 9 heavily bent LCP impeller, this time maybe a bit pointier, and we got that absolutely necessary visible central shaft, because that stuff adds performance. Around the fan we got the same big rubber corners with the holes going all the way through which are very helpful in radiator installations and we have these closed off indents that you might or might not find appealing. For the thickness it's still a 25.5mm fan and for some reason we still got that ridiculously long like 900 and something millimeter long PVM cable which why? And why doesn't it have a split at the end? And why isn't it braided? Anyway, spec-wise, this thing is impressive. At the max 2000 RPM, we are looking at an up to 119.6 CFM fan and up to 3.57 mm of H2O static pressure. And so far, everything looks like this is going to be even more impressive than the smaller version. Yeah, who am I kidding? I know the benchmarks. Th these things are just gold. We benchmark fans in two different ways. Once on our case simulator, a wooden box where we use two fans to recycle the air within and measure the results by looking at the CPU temperature underneath a passive notch p one And for cases specifically, we benchmark both 140s and 120s on the same setup. And I do believe this to be absolutely fair, because depending on the and we are using different plates with different sized holes. And let's be honest, this is the exact choice you would do if you would be looking at 140s versus 120s for your next case or for your next build. The average case does support both 120s and 140s. Hence, in my opinion, it's important to have this benchmark be done with more than just a single fan size. And then for radiators, we blow through a 60mm 10 FPI radiator and we measure the water temperature above ambient. Allowing the toughest tough fans to spin at their max 2000 RPM on our case simulator made the CPU stay at 42.2 degrees C above ambient, which is a brutal result for a 2000 RPM fan. It's right next to the Arctic P12 Max, which is spinning significantly quicker, and it beat the Li and Li P28. Though they are 120mm fans, but factoring only in 140mm fans, it looks amazing. Arctic P14 ARGB, all the Be Quiet Pure and Light Wings, the NFA14, everything lost. The only 140mm fan that won against the tough fan, Pro 14, were the Silent Wing Pro 4 in 140 and Arctic's P14 Max, two fans which are spinning significantly faster. So max performance for its speed, these things are amazing without a doubt. And what about the 120mm version? Well, they were okay as for max performance, but the 140s are without a doubt significantly better for cases. But the thing about tough fans was that they are or they have a really really good noise to performance ratio. And for the 140s this trend is continued.
From start to finish, the tough fan beat the Silent Wing Pro 4 at the top speed by a small margin, which got bigger towards the 50% mark. And compared to things like the Corsair RS 140 Max, a 30mm thick fan, they were slightly better at 100% and slightly worse between 60 and 50. And if you throw in things like the NFA 14, no, just no chance. Compared to the smaller 120mm version, it's actually very interesting. At 190% of the 120mm version's max speed, the 140s won. And from there, they just kept going up and up and up. But actually, the 120s dropped down to noise floor slightly faster, still giving them a, a brief moment where their ratio was slightly better. No matter how you put it, these Tough Fans 14 Pros are amazing case fans. And what about radiators? At max speed, they kept the water at 8.4 degrees C above ambient, which, wow, this puts them at the top of the list, even outperforming the significantly quicker spinning Silent Wings 4 Pro, or Pro 4, I, I, I still don't understand why they had that switch. And let's be honest, the two top spots are ridiculously fast spinning fans, so that's just unfair to compare them to. So if you just take normal fans, these are very, very, very good max performance fans on radiators. And the noise to performance ratio looks even better. Towards the top, the P14 Max and Silent Bing Pro 4 didn't stand a chance, and it took until 70 or 60% of the max speed for the Silent Wings to catch up and stay within a margin of error. As a series, I really gotta say, Thermaltake released some amazing fans here. The Tough Fan Pro 12 and 14 are some amazing fans in every category, but especially the 140mm version is a beast. Both for radiator and case scenarios, this thing or these things, they perform like monsters, both performance and noise. And even if it gets harder and harder to say something like this is the best fan and, and this is not the best fan because there are just so many things that you could, that you have so many metrics for that. But the Tough Fan Pro 14, that thing is ticking so many boxes. One of which is actually the price. You can get one of these for about 21.22 in euros right here and now. That's a very competitive price if you ask me. It's not like this is a super affordable fan, really not. Let's not kid ourselves here. If you want to spec out a full build using only these, it's going to cost you a lot of money. But compared to Corsair, Noctia, Fantex, it's okay. 22 bucks, I, I've seen way worse than that. The thing is just, the tough fan whoops everybody's ass in every benchmark. So for me, absolute recommendation for the Tough Fan 12 Pro and even more the 14 Pro. No matter what you're trying to do with it, if the price and the look is okay for you or you are into this, go wild because this thing or they will handle it. But okay, this should be everything on the <sighs> toughest tough fan, which is even tougher to beat than the previous toughest tough fan because it's even more tough thanks to the tougher form factor. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to build another throne, because this one deserves it the most. If you want to continue watching, have a look at our take on the 120mm version of this. It's not necessarily better, but if you are bound to the 120mm form factor, you gotta do something. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.